It is a joy to be in this moment, a special moment for the Concordia family. Last year on a night when we recognized the athletes who competed with and against Eugene Parker, we heard especially about the intentions and the intentionality that Eugene Parker lived his life from Eugene's lifelong friend and teammate and a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, Walter Jordan. Walter spoke of Eugene's fierce commitment to living life by standards, standards of excellence, not goals or attentions, but standards. And those standards began with a proclamation of his faith in Jesus as a savior, and it extended to a fierce dedication to his family, loyalty and commitment to his friends and clients, and a disposition of humility and love for all those around him. Eugene Parker's pursuit of excellence in life profession of faith and assurance of eternal victory with his Lord and Savior is a fitting example for our students here at Concordia. And we are honored to have this alumnus's name prominently displayed at Concordia Lutheran High School. We are so grateful to be joined tonight by members of the Parker family, Jeanette Quillett and the Quillett family, whose contributions made this possible, Ken Finner and Garrett Reinking, whose craftsmanship helped to complete it. At this time, I invite Brandon Parker to speak on behalf of the Parker family. Okay, so the story goes, Eugene was raised in the inner city of Fort Wayne, Indiana by, a sing by his single mother, Jesse Parker. His ties to the Lutheran community of Fort Wayne started in grade school, where he was a student at St. Paul. <clears throat> uh, one, one day, he was invited to spend the night at one of his classmates' homes, so he went ahead and spent the night. I remember him describing to me when what reality was just a, a modest middle-class home as a mansion. He couldn't help but <clears throat> ask his friend's father, man, what do I have to do to live like this? Well, Eugene, you first have to go to college and get a degree. So when he returned home, he reflected, he said, he soon realized that there was no way he was going, he was, his mother was gonna be able to afford to send him to college. That meant the only way he, he'd be able to earn that would be through an athletic scholarship. And it was at that moment, the dream was born. <clears throat> After considering all of his options, he decided that basketball would be the sport he could probably most excel at. From that moment forward, he will fully commit his life towards improving his basketball skills to, <clears throat> and to become the best player he could be and get that scholarship. So every day, a strenuous jump rope routine, ball handling, and the shots. One can't tell the story about Eugene Parker without talking about the shots. Hundreds, sometimes thousands, of left-hand jumpers every day for over a decade. Sometimes at the park, sometimes at the Jennings Recreation Center. No matter what the circumstances, Gene was gonna get his shots in every day. You see, that's where this place comes in. As a Concordia student athlete and basketball player, this court became sacred ground for Eugene. As my mother can tell you better than I, because she was the one chasing down rebounds and passing him the ball. <laughs> he would spend hours on top of hours in this gym, in this very gym, working and putting up thousands of shots. <clears throat> he would then go on to have scoring records and win many basketball games on this floor while being at Concordia and building lifelong relationships in which he truly cherished. He loved this place. He loved this school. He loved this community, his teammates, and his friends. And he most certainly loved this gym. Uh, my brothers and I were going to have many practices and games in this gym over our own careers. <clears throat> but even as a fan and supporter of his own children, my dad would somewhat light up a little more whenever he was here at Concordia. And never failing to uh, take a few air jumpers and remind us of what he used to do back in his day. <clears throat> he would go on to get that basketball scholarship that he worked so hard for at Purdue University. Of course, he would then go on to have a tremendous amount of success as an attorney, sports agent, and businessman. Oh, and the house. 
let's just say, I think he was pleased with the lifestyle that he was able to provide for himself and his family. And as his son and a representative of our entire family, I want to express the utmost gratitude to and our appreciation for the outstanding honor of naming this court in his memory. A special thanks goes out to Mr. Greg Reberg for spearheading this initiative and the entire Quillet family for the unbelievably generous donation to complete the renovation process. And all of those who donated their time, money to make this become a reality. Although it's unfortunate that he can't be here in the flesh to receive this honor <clears throat> and to express his humility and appreciation for the Concordia family, I feel it as my duty to express it for him to the best of my ability on this special night. So although words can't begin to describe how great it feels to see his signature on this court, it truly does mean the world. I ask that the current students in Concordia family please remember Eugene the Eugene Parker story, not as a basketball story or as a sports story, but the, <clears throat> but the story as one reflected in his childhood nickname, which is the story of a dreamer. Appreciate you all and God bless. very special and unique relationship between the Parker and the Quillet family and at this time I invite Chuck Quillet to share a few words. Uh, you know, uh, Greg Rayburg uh, gave me 90 seconds uh, to say, say a few words and uh, 90 seconds is, that's more playing time than I got. To, when Gene was leading the way. I don't know what that means, but it's really a special honor to be here. Uh, when we had the uh, Gene Parker night, uh, my dad and I were looking forward to being here. And uh, what, a week before, we lost him. There is a, a close relationship that goes way back, and uh, we're just grateful to be here. Uh, we're grateful to honor Gene. Uh, he was a teammate, he was a friend in so many ways. Gene and uh, uh, guys like Ronnie Knox, women like Tanya Hayes, Marty Wright, they set a course here at Concordia during a time that, you know, it wasn't easy then, but they set, they set a course that we could really uh, strive for. So that means so much. Uh, but all of it meant uh, even more to my father, Russ Quillett. Dad uh, took the lead in recruiting Gene to Purdue, and uh, it was one of his great, great uh, joys to see him become a polar maker. Uh, we had some, some IU friends and classmates and, that saw otherwise, but Purdue was, we were proud. Uh, you know, Dad also uh, became a bit of a mentor to Gene in those early days, those Purdue days and then the law school and whatnot. And uh, there was a, a time where Gene came to Dad and, asked for advice about leaving a very prosperous opportunity with a law firm here in town, a terrific law firm. And Dad encouraged Gene to take the chance to go out and do what he did. And I know that was, that was a brave move on Gene's part. And uh, Dad was proud of Gene for that. Uh, I've written things down, but uh, you know, that law career, forsaking that law career and taking his law practice into the sport world, you know, <laughs> what did he achieve? You know, he became one of the most influential uh, sport agents, consultants in professional sports. And he did it here in town. And uh, he did it with the humility. He did it with the, uh, the vision, the compassion that marked him as a, as a high school leader. Um, 
But saying all that, it wasn't just the fact that Jean could ball like few others around that came before or after. It wasn't because he went out to Purdue and was a superstar there as a captain and uh, one of their all-time scorers and whatnot. It was an incredible career. But what uh, bound my father, Russ Quillen, to Gene, I think, was they both shared another thing in common. Neither one of them had a father in their life that was in their life in a, in a meaningful way. And um, that's a big wound for any, any kid to carry. And I'll, I'll make a point that it's probably a bitter wound for a young man to carry. But you know, both of those guys found their heavenly father in a pretty important stage of their life. And that relationship with their heavenly father defined them. It, it was what they became. And, uh, you know, um, that boy, that wound they carried, it was filled up. And you guys carry that legacy on as sons, loving wife. That's magnificent. And all of us carry that legacy on as well. And uh, I know my mother, my mother appreciates the opportunity to give back uh, in Jean's honor tonight. Uh, doing so, we're also honoring our father, Russ Quillen. His, his life, his faith in Christ, his generosity uh, that came, that were fruits, fruits of their faith in Christ, are what we're celebrating tonight. So with that, Greg, I blew through your 90 seconds, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm enjoying the court time. <laughs> On behalf of the students and the faculty and staff and board of directors, we have gifts for both the Quillet and the Parker family. Uh, shadow boxes that include the Parker family that include uh, portions of the gym floor as well as photographs of uh, Eugene and his teammates uh, and, and photographs then of the current rendering of the floor. We are, we are truly blessed here at Concordia to be able to uh, celebrate uh, people who are of such significant influence and impact, uh, but none more than our faith in Jesus. And so today, I do invite you at this time to stand for prayer. Today, Lord, we give you thanks for the completion of this floor, for the beauty of the wood from which it is made, for the skill and time and attention to detail offered by Ken Finner and Garrett Reinking and all who labored to complete it. And for those who so generously donated, Heavenly Father, may all who participate in this place of competition and learning be blessed to grow in wisdom, stature, and favor with you and among all people. Amen. And so today, as we dedicate this floor to the service of the church and among his people, we recognize the great gifts that God has given to us. We are in the process of continuing the renovation of this cage, and we are excited to share with you that the next critical step of replacing the bleachers, the contract has been signed. That will be done over the summer. So we look forward to, just as we celebrate with you now, uh, the new bleachers going in over the summer, I invite you to look at the renderings that will be up in the upper hallway during the game. And none of these facility improvements can be made possible without investments of love for our high school. And so please contact Greg Rayburg or Matt Pono and let us know how you might want to be part of the next phase of this project and all the projects that pursue Christian excellence here at Concordia Lutheran High School. Thank you for your time today.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Outstanding.